Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me share my screen. I got a lot of cool things to show you today. How's everybody doing? Um, first of all, let's do checks. So where's, where's my, oh, there we go, okay. All right, um, sound is good, screen is good. Give me double checks on all that. Good morning, everything is good. All right, awesome. All right, big pop um, in the marketplace today. Um, lots and lots of really good trades uh, today, guys. It just uh, it's actually been like super easy. I um, I did a little bit of trading here on my account. Let me show it up to you overnight. Let me see where my uh, where's my history. Is this the overnight? Yeah, this is the overnight trades. Um, and I'll and I'll share with you some so you know some of the thoughts that I did for them. Um, I have some good news. We have more fun indicators for you. As a matter of fact, let me um, hang a second. Let me just, I need to get this bit.ly a link, but I'm gonna share the new indicator and then I'll go through it and then we'll, uh, we'll see if we got any trade uh, setups off of it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, where's my thing? Okay. All right, again, this is a private link. All you need to do is just click it and it will automate and add it to your favorites and it'll automatically add to your favorites. It's called Turn to Trade. And it's an additional, it's actually a super, super cool um, variant of a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. There, you know, there's the trend fade, there is the fade fade, and now there's a turn to trend, turn to trade. Um, and right now, all I have on my chart is just the the trend indicator and the turn to effectively turn to trend indicator, because um, those are the ones that really work super well on um, um, on you know any kind of a any kind of a continuity trade. So if, if you look at the charts today, the this is this is a equity market or this is a chart just made for money for us. That's why I had such a good night overnight um, because. When you have any kind of continuous trend, all we have to do is just join any of the trend by signals and um, um, it'll work fine. But but um, what I did is that I added sort of an even earlier, earlier signal in that same um, thought. And basically, the, the, if, you, if you look at the chart, let's make sure, is everybody seeing the chart in like really, really big, let me just zoom in on this in a really, really big um, format. And um, so th there are just patches of a little bit of green to red over here, super hard to see. I guess, let me just see if I could, let's, let's do it this way. This is, this is sort of a very, very, um, a very clean example of what, uh, what I want you to, um, to see, first of all, the turn to trade um, settings have a default of just showing you one signal per cycle, but you could easily change it to two. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend you change it to two just to show you the critical thing. There's, there's a critical filter you need to uh, make with a turn signal to make it, in my opinion, truly, truly valuable. So you, the first thing you'll notice, right, is this is obviously only showing it to you in an uptrend, right? We have the big uptrend, we have a little bit of a red sell-off. And then when the candle, the way the turn, the turn signal is developed is when the candle um, closes, uh, opens below, below the, the red envelope, but closes above. In other words, it makes the turn through the red zone, right? You guys see this? The candle always makes the turn through the red zone. It opens um, or it has a low, it has a low underneath there and a close above there, right? Everybody sees that? Give me a yes on this to make sure that there, everybody in the room understands this. That's the that's the you know foundational derivative of the um, of the trade. So the first thing you notice is that first of all, it's always earlier than the, than the trend signal, obviously because it's coming it's coming out of the red zone, and the trend signal isn't going to show up um, until the green zone. But there is you need to be cautious with this thing because the biggest um, the biggest danger with this particular signal, in my opinion, is it can be too early, right? In other words, so sometimes the turn will be too early, and then if, if, if it's a sort of a downward trend, 
you're just basically you know buying uh, buying a a falling a falling move through the moving average. So the way I like to avoid that. Um, now I have it as I said in the in the indicator I have a default to one signal, but the way you want to avoid that is what you want to make sure is that the turn buy signal has at least 10 candles in front of it in the zone, right? Meaning that, that they've, they've, they've kind of spent at least 10 minutes or 10 periods, wherever, you know, whatever timeline we're in. Um, yeah, there's audio. Everybody hears me? Um, can you tell Peter to, to log in, log out, right? Everybody, the, the audio is fine, right? Um, Okay, so um, the point being is that you don't want you don't want um, the signal to be too early. Like over here, there's only three or four three or four candles before before the turn by shows up. I always pass that. On the other hand, this one has already got about ten candles in it. It's pretty mature. That's a much higher probability, um, a much higher probability turn signal that comes in over here. Now over here, ironically enough, by the way, sometimes, you know, in, especially on a one minute chart, you're not always gonna get the better price than the trend price. So you're buying here at 42 and the trend price is actually 40, right? So the trend price in this particular case, uh, you know, especially on a, on, a, on a low volatility kind of early morning trade may sometimes be uh, better than the turn trade. But regardless, both of these trades actually would have worked for if you're trading 510, I've actually, I've actually um, started trading a lot of this stuff with with a 1020 structure because um, you know if I'm a when I saw that there was a strong trend in the in the market this morning, I just said okay if that's the case then I'm going to buy the turns the right turns you know the turns that that have had at least a 10 candle maturity cycle with a 1020 and that that of course worked you know worked very well the, the you know the problem of course as always is um, when you're doing this in a semi-automated fashion, you tend to be a little bit late and you tend, you know, sometimes you, you chase, you know, if you're not watching the charts carefully, you'll chase the trade. So all of this will, you know, we'll, we're going to automate this and semi-automate this. The beautiful thing is um, because we can make this a, an indicator on five, uh, we can then integrate it with the applet, with our trading, um, uh, with our trading applet. Uh, what the hell did I decide to call this thing, by the way, guys, what did I call that thing on Friday, which where's my amnesia? What do we call it? Oh, the commander, trading commander, right? We we can integrate it with the trading commander, um, so that like, you know you can like you can actually like click a button and, and to to set trading commander to turn by and and it will and, and it will just take the trade automatically, so you won't miss it um, at the right time. But regardless, you know right now you know we we had we had a little bit of a trend by signal before the market, which I took long here and that already you know that already worked, um, and now you know we just kind of uh, uh, playing. Now, the thing that's, that's fun about all of this is that, you know, if you really wanted to, you're, you're in a, you're in a bullish trend, we could probably extend this. And as a matter of fact, we probably should. I'm watching this, like we got 15 seconds. This candle ends above, um, the green zone. I mean, it's not, it, it's, it's not as high a probability because you, you obviously, you know, you're stretched out to the upside and, and like over here, you're, you're not ending in the green zone just yet. So really have to, okay, let's get long here. Okay, what I get long? I took. Uh, let me see where I got long here. I don't even know where I got long. Um, Forty nine seventy five. Let's take that for five. Let's see if we can get you know five points out of this thing. Maybe I might. I might uh, just get only four points out of this thing. Uh, let's see if I can get four points out of this thing. And see if it uh, if it works our way. And, you know, and the reason why you you know when you're doing it in the green zone. It's it's already tired. It's already you know it's it's already been up. It kind of sold off, coming back out. You're just kind of, kind of hoping for a secondary rally here uh, on the move. So it's not. This is by no means the ideal setup. I'm just kind of wanted to show you the um, um, the possibilities of this particular setup as it as it's sort of playing itself out. Let me see. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna go. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna take the two seven five here. Just again because I don't love the uh, I don't love the setup even though. Um, and it, yeah, and there it goes. It, 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 it actually gave us a, a pop. So if you guys followed that, you actually will look at this. You actually got four or five points. Um, but you know that whole idea um, of staying strong to the trend, stay, staying with the signal when it um, uh, when, you know when it shows promise um, is a really good idea. Actually, damn, look at this. I, I totally totally sold out early. Should we, we could have had ten points on this trade? All right. 
Um, hopefully, some of you guys caught it. Anybody caught uh, catch that move on the turn? Um, so let me just move my tr trading uh, structure off and. Uh, Let's look at where the other indices are and what they're showing. I mean, everything, look, oh, look at this. Um, that's interesting. So the Dow is actually down, right? Um, and the Dow signals really now are going to turn into trend buy. And then, by the way, um, the turn sell signal, I don't know if I can, I need, I need to show it to you. I got I to gotta find it. It's, it's all going to be, you need, first of all, like a negative um, I'm looking for like a negative slice. We don't have it. We don't have any negative slices on the Dow. So maybe we can go. Let me let me go back to uh, you know, Thursday. Just I want I want to show you some examples of this. Okay, yeah. So um, right. So you know here uh, this is obviously 2200 New York, like the worst hours. Let me let me show you a good example of this. Okay, so you know, here's the Dow. Here's the first turn sell. Notice that this is really only like I would say six or seven candles into the trade, right? And then we have the second turn sell over here, which is not really you know much better. Um, and it fails here. It actually th this one actually probably fails because if you were using like even a forty ten, um, let me see what would you have done here. 22 goes up against you 40, 50, and comes down to 12. Yeah. If you use 2010, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have gotten it just because you would gotten spiked out. I'm just looking for um, this all it's all been an upward, upward um, market. So um, okay. So you know, here's a good example. It's says finally we, you know, finally we get we're into a decent um, sell zone, and you know, you get a um, um, a turn sell over here, and that's a you know that's a nice clean sell to the you know to the uh, to the downside. Um, but right now, you know, we're just selling off hard. We don't have any trend signals. What's what's on the um, S and P here? Also selling off hard. Interesting. So both S and P and the uh, Dow gave up um, some points. In the meantime, by the way, you know you saw you can see that there is. Um, I have a double signal here, which I sh I just I'll get rid of it because it's uh, it's a little bit annoying. Just stay with a single signal, um, you know. And you can see that you know the trend buy signals, especially if if, if you sort of wait for a more, uh, you know, it, in the S and P, it's it's very very quiet in the morning, so it's it's kind of you almost don't even have to wait for you know for the more mature signal because it doesn't have a lot of volatility. Uh, but if it goes five six candles and in, into the move and it gives you a buy signal, it's it's been a very very good signal. Now it's going to be actually interesting to see to see um, if this negative trend holds it or whether this is just a tiny little sell off uh, into the move. Um, and then I'm going to show you some really interesting ways to think about all of this. Um, in a much bigger picture vision, where if you just wanted to trade with the absolute, like, you know, if you didn't want to just scalp on both sides of the market, but wanted to trade the strong side of the market, there's a very interesting, um, simple way for us to figure out what the strong side of the market is and just stay on that side um, the whole time, the whole time. Um, so uh, let me. Uh, Nothing going on over here. Let's see what let's see what the German is doing. German had a trend sell here. That's actually would have been a pretty good signal uh, right on nine thirty though. So you know we couldn't have uh, we couldn't have caught it. Um, and you can see by the way that you know it's like of course the, the signal is, isn't oh isn't perfect, but you can see how many times it is good before it becomes bad. You have you know one two three good signals, and this signal what it comes in 66, 67. It doesn't really, you know, I mean, maybe you could have made, no, nah, you really couldn't have made five. It's just four maximum before it dies out. But still, you know, better than nothing. It gave you, it gave you some good signals. Uh, you know, all the way out here, the German was, was very, very strong. Trend signal here, turn by signals over here, all very good. How's the UK? 
UK is up 1% today, so that's really strong. What's the... Uh, um, Right, so let, let's, just, let's just study what I call like the inferior signal versus the superior signal. You see how this is basically three candles in, the buy signal is just way too early, right? And, and this is what's really, really interesting is when the first buy signal, the first buy signal is much more than, you know, like 10, 20 candles in, especially an uptrend, right? That's a great, great signal reversed, you know, to the upside. Right. Um, even here, it's, you know, it's obviously very tired. The trend gets, it's been a little bit tired. If you've had a really huge move um, in a trend, um, you, you know, you had like one big trend move over here at the start that like, here's the trend buy signal. Um, and, then, and then the whole thing has just been a runaway move. Um, so you only had like one, um, this would be a, a, a turn by signal over here, right? So let me let me just sort of show this to you on like a three, three candle, bit. oops, sorry. You see turn by, turn by, and then this turn by over here, the third one, boom, that would have been a nice clean one. And here's the first one, which is really, really good one, would have been a very good one, right? Um, and here we finally fail. Um, here we finally fail, and here, here we actually get the first trend signal, which has been a super good signal right at 9.32 on the open. So it looks like the European indices um, cratered first and gave us, gave us negative sell signals. It's interesting, they kind, of, they, they kind of died out first. And now we have a sell signal in the Dow, which, oh man, where's my Dow? Let's, um, we got 30 seconds. So let's... Uh, and sorry, I still have I still have the um, oh god, Heiken Ashi candles on this one, but uh, you know we're obviously going to ignore them. Um, let's see if this trend we're going to trade this trend signal in the Dow. Okay, ah, uh, damn, uh, I got bad price. I got 53s, but let's see if that works for us still, if it comes in a little bit. Boom. Okay. That was good for five. I'm just, you know, I traded only five in a Dow because um, this is very, very far away from uh, from even the moving averages. It's, so, it's sold off so hard, so fast over here. It was really, really far away, but it was, you know, it was good for five, which is which is all we wanted. And then we'll just leave that alone. For the time being, um, few, oh, let me see if I can get rid of this control I. I'm gonna get rid. I'm gonna get rid of the Heiken Ashis right now so that we're not confused by them. Okay, much better. Um, and then let's take a look at the S and P. S and P no uh, no signals just yet. So you know, just trade. We're just trading what you know what what the uh, the market is showing us. Um, I don't know if anybody caught the uh, the down move here with me, but you know that was like a five point quick move. Um, markets obviously, market is doing its usual, you know, let's rally into the New York Open and then sell off, and then we're going to see where where the real trend um, rent, real trend goes right now. Uh, move, but the beauty of sort of our analytical approach is that we're you know we're going to be able to read the better you know the truer flows in a market. So first of all, let me just ask, everybody understand the signal? Does everybody like it? Does everybody see the possibilities of the signal? My main reason why I like it, assuming I can, I can get a, um, what I call a mature buy signal is um, um, that it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's just earlier. You know, it, I, I think it's it's an earlier signal. So whenever we have we're earlier, that by definition means better prices, um, better risk reward ratios, right? Um, everybody understand that? What's in the ES? I'm looking at the ES. There's nothing here. Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a problem with the ES that if you mistype it, um, I keep thinking you're talking about the uh, the S and P. Um, so here's what I here's what I want to show you. That's kind of very very cool. Let's take the I'm just going to take the turn to trade off. Let's just keep the trend on. Just keep the trend on, okay? Um, and uh, let's just do a very very simple analytical that I think really puts us into the proper frame of mind. Which is this? Um, let's let, we're going to go back to our friend the Nasdaq because that's really that's really what we want to be look at Nasdaq and Nasdaq may 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 actually start giving us uh, some signals. But uh, um, here's the here's the thing that I wanted to show you. Let's go to the one hour chart. Let's go to the one hour chart. Right? What does everybody see on the one hour chart? Right? What everybody sees on the one hour chart is that we're still in an uptrend. Right? Now, what's very cool about our structure, right, of, of looking at, at, um, uh, at the chart in this kind of a trend analytical way is the way I define regime, which is what's the long-term regime, where's the long-term bias, is um, until I have an opposite trend buy signal, and remember, I won't get a I won't get a sell trend buy signal like here. In this case, it gave you a false signal, which is okay. I mean, it's, you know, it, it will sometimes do that. Um, it gave you a false directional signal on the 19th of May before it completely turned itself around. Um, but I will, you know, until I get a sell trend sell signal, the assumption here is that the bias is to the upside, right? So let's assume this is like the bias is to the upside starting from 20th of May, 20th of May. We have not had a downward bias since then, right? You guys with me on that? So let's go back to the one minute chart and let's pick any, let's pick May 25, right? Sort of a midpoint, right? Let's just pick a May 25 midpoint, right? And we say, okay, go to, right? Now we're going to go to the, you know, uh, to the go to, right? And here's the beautiful thing. If you say to yourself, you know what, the upside bias, the, the bias is to the upside only. So all I'm going to do is I'm, I'm never going to take any trend sell signals. I'm just going to take trend buy signals the whole time and no trend sell signals, right? Even, even if some of these things like really make a lot of money, right? Uh, I'm just going to ignore them, uh, uh, all of them. And what you see, right, is how many more successful trend buy? Because obviously the upside buys the buy. Even this signal over here is positive because if you're buying over here, you're able to, you know, to exit out over here. And this is like in the middle of, of, the, of the dead of the night. But if you sort of trade here, you know, you're long. You ignore this. That's fine. You ignore this, you know, this profit. This is a long trade, right? Okay, fine. Yeah, here's one. Here's the only trend buy that kind of, and this is the opening, opening range market. So it's obviously going to be very, very volatile. The kind of, I think maybe, I wonder if it, it actually does trip you up. You're at 91, goes down to, yeah, I think, yeah, you would have gotten stopped on a, on a minus 20 before, although, let me see, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. The, you know, it would have stopped you out um, just, uh, just on a move, but fine, you know. So are you giving up some of these profitabilities um, on the fact? Yes, because if you're, you know, if, if your idea is that you want to trade um, to the long side, you are, um, you're going to give up some of those opportunities. And I'm going to, I'm going to just sort of show you a way to capitalize on some of this stuff in just a minute. But so, you know, you skip all of this and you go right back into trend buys, trend buys, trend buys, trend buys, trend buys. You miss, you miss, you miss all of these. Remember, it's not just that you, you win a lot, but you don't lose. That's the key thing. You don't lose. Yes, you had some winners over there, but every time you did a trend sell here, you would have been a loser because the bias is still is still to the upside. Even this, I think, would have just kind of stuffed you because you didn't have a lot of continuity, right? Um, this, on the other hand, would have been at least a modest five, 11 to, um, to 16. So you certainly had five, you know, five points on the move here. Um, okay, so you know, this, one, this one, I think, fails you. Uh, well, this is, a couple of these actually got very ugly and, and did fail you. Let me see. So this one sort of was a, was a choppy one. Um, so the you know bias on the 26 was, wouldn't have been good, but then you you it does make it up. You know you have, have a couple of losers, then you have you start having winners again to the buy side. You start having winners again to the buy side. You start having winners again to the buy side. So you know the fact that you, that your longer term trend stay, is positive and you stay and you stay faithful to that idea, 
you basically continuously making, you know, three out of four winners, three out of four winners, three out of four winners. Occasionally, um, you're going to hit two losers in a row, but rarely, rarely. But, you know, you're, you're pretty much going to hit mostly winners um, and by sidestepping, uh, sidestepping these moves, right? Sorry, let me just go back. Let's just see if anything is setting up right now on the, uh, no, nothing. This is, wow, it really, we really came down big time. What a, what a total yank job on the, um, on the NASDAQ, right? But so here's my other point. So the other point that I wanted to make for you is let's go back to the 20, 25th. And now let me um, add, um, actually, you know what? Let me, let me just, I'll, I'll, do, I'll go with you guys. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this into my favorites indicator. I'm gonna just add this to my favorites. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, what's going on here? Man, it's slow. Okay. Add to favorite. Add to favorites. Okay. So let's go to here and we'll go into my favorites. Turn to trade. Okay. And um, now I'm just going to say I only want long onlys. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Where's my trend buys? Now, the thing is, there's a little bit of a flaw in this indicator, which I have to fix with, um, with Daniel, is that when I, what I was saying to you is, you know, remember, like I said, you, you only trade long, you know, long onlys. The way you would trade long onlys is um, you would have a, although, no, you don't have a, you don't have a turn sell signal. Do you have, this, is, this would be a um, turn sell signal. So you would be, you know, this is a turn buy. Um, Oh, is it turn by in this one? I wonder why it's not turned by in this one. Let me just, sorry, let me see if, if this is, he sh if, if I need to find, um, I'm looking for underneath the EMA to find the turn buys underneath the EMA. Where is this thing? Oh man, my, my, my computer is crawling here. Why is this? Uh, I, I think the, we, we have a little bit of an error in the indicator, which, which will update the point. The point is that I wanted to make here is that remember you're trading, you know, the upside, you're trading only with the upside bias. So you don't take any trend trades to the downside, but what you can take if you, um, you know, if you're confident in your upside bias is you can trade, take your, your turn trades underneath the, um, underneath the, uh, the signal, right, right over here. So, um, if you took this trade, that would have worked, right? Underneath the signal, it took this trade over here. This is a turn by signal, which that doesn't show, but it but it would be would have worked also. So the whole point is that if you just trade to whatever you think is the bias, then you can um, you know you can you can really do very well. Now right now we have a trend sell signal showing up in in Nas, and um, I'm going to pass up on this actually. I think it might work. Um, but remember what I said to you, like the, the overall trade here is <clears throat> um, positive, right? And the bias is positive. And this thing is just way, 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 way out off the moving average envelope, but just sold really, really hard. And as you can see right now, <clears throat> the, uh, you're basically selling into the bottom. And that's one of the interesting things about how you can analyze the, you know, where is the bias? Having this, having the knowledge of where the bias is, um, really helps you avoid unnecessarily bad risks, right? So what's really going to be interesting, and, and we'll, we, since I don't have the the indicator properly working, we just have to do this manually if we, can, if, we, if we can if we can this can develop. Is if we get a turn through the red zone, and not too early, although the, so the red zone is already it's already you know gone quite a lot, so. By definition, it's going to have already ten candles in the zone. Um, you know, that breaks out to the upside. We're going to try and trade that um, as a as a, as an upside signal because, as I said to you, the bias um, on the uh, on the market is to the upside. And by the way, same thing is on the on the um, Dow, right? Which is playing around. So the Dow also on on a, on a one hour chart 
shows a um, let's just take my word for it that it you know that it shows a um, uh, a positive bias, meaning the trend the, the trend sell is, is is above the moving average, or the trend bias is above the moving average. So um, if this thing ends up like around I don't know was it 80, 75, it's got it's got a it's got to close through this upper SMA. We'll trade it to the you know to the upside um, as a as a term trade. And so far, it's not giving it to us, and it's fine because you know it's looking like it wants to consolidate. But um, I guess it's basically about 74, 75. If we're closing 75 now, it's you know we've got about a minute to go, so it's, it's a long way to go in this candle. But you know the cool thing is if you think about this. You, you, you know, you're buying low in what is effectively a longer term uptrend, right? And um, um, let's see if that, you know, if it plays out. Let me just see what the, uh, uh, what the S&P is doing. S&P is also fooling around with this thing, just tickling it, but not really uh, playing with it. And also, by the way, let's just take a look at the NAS, which is much my really my favorite. The Nasdaq is, is falling off. Uh, Nasdaq is coming off. So um, and so is the Dow. The Dow is also coming off. Um, so they're not ready to rally. They're not ready to turn. But that's the beautiful thing is um, we don't. You know, we're not going to rush the trade. We'll just wait until the market tells us it's ready to turn, and then we can we can trade intelligently uh, on the move. So so far, you know, just consolidation. Not really, really ready to turn. And we're not chasing anything until until we get um, get definition on the move. Everybody following me on on the logic here? Um, since we got a little time, I, let me just confirm to you. Look at the one hour chart on the Dow, right? See, we are positive bias, right? Now, a huge, huge corrective move here on, on the one hour candles, obviously. But actually, as you can see, it's kind of it's kind of uh, popping. Now, it looks like, looks like we might be able to get the signal here. Let's see if we got, what time do we have? Nine seconds. We're gonna just be very, um, um, three, two, one. Okay, we'll go 78. Let's see if that works for us. Um, you know, if the turn works for us. I mean, uh, it, it, it may, may it kind of, Retrace quite a lot, so it, it may trap us on you know to the downside, which is okay. Like it, um, um, sometimes it, you know the first the first turn is a false turn um, on these moves, but let's be a little patient here. Let's let's see if it will uh, turn itself around. Sorry for my dog barking. The landscaper is in the house, so she's just guarding the house. So you guys can hear it. Now it does. It looks like it's going to just turn against us. Um, now we'll see. I might be. I might be able to survive. Survive this particular turn. Um, let me just look at the uh, S and P and how the S and if the S and P turned. Now the S and P did. Everybody S and P really got weak, so we just didn't get the move here. And the Dow is obviously. Excuse me. The Nasdaq is certainly not turning. Um, so NAS after like making a big white arc is making a, you know, a secondary move. And it looks like we, you know, I have a feeling we may not be able to get a turn. It looks like um, it could be a, a much more negative day. Yeah, it looks, the, 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 we got tapped on the Dow, uh, unfortunately, uh, for, for this move, but that's fine. You know, you, you're not, you're not going to get every uh, proper trade. And I was just trying to trade to the, to the dominant um, trend. The, the, Caveat always when you're trading to the dominant trend is that if the dominant trend begins to turn, like in this case, I don't know, but it could be a situation where the, where the markets are really topping out. And if the whole day today is kind of a negative day, then you are fighting the regime that is changing, right? So that's always, that's always the risk that you're fighting the regime that is changing. But the beautiful thing is if the regime is changing, it's going to change relatively quickly. You're not going to make too many errors. Because first of all, you're not going to get a ch too many chances to, to go by because it's all going to be one way downward action. And secondly, that downward action is going to change the hourly charts uh, pretty quickly, and therefore, um, you know, keep you out of uh, buying any additional, you know, dips. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's uh, uh, 
it's 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 not a dangerous strategy that puts you into a long term danger. But you you do have you know like it it looks right now like we could have got you know like we got clipped on uh, um, on what is potentially a big sell off into the market um, all day long. And then you know um, if you if you don't want to trade just to the dominant trend, you can always go back to just trading your trend signals, which clearly you know clearly in the, in the in the Nasdaq they wouldn't have worked unless you had a um, 2010 uh, spread uh, on, on, a, on a 510 right now. You know you, you got spiked out. Um, but what's interesting is that we made fresh lows, and that's a, that's a bad sign if you're a bull. It's a pretty decent sign if you're a bear. It just means that there's much more continuation to the downside than you think there is. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking. Um, You know, the S and P. Look at it down. I I am gonna go like if the, if the Dow comes back up through the you know through the red zone, I am gonna try and do one more trade to the upside just because um, the the the. Um, upward trend is still a dominant trend in all the indices, but um, yeah, but you can clearly see this. You know, the sellers are are in control of the game right now. I mean, the buyers the buyers need to stabilize first and then turn hard in order to short squeeze the sellers. Uh, right now, that's not happening. So we're just you know we're staying out of the way. Yeah, I wish we I wish we had a little bit more setups today, but it's, it's a very, very quiet day so far. Um, So this is consolidating. Let's, I'm just going to give it, let's give it like a couple more candles. Then I want to kind of take you to the FX side of it and, and just show you how cool this is on the FX side of it as well. Um, ah, it's really, you know, it's really, it, what's, what's great about the setup, right, is that it, it, it stops you from doing stupid things. If you think that there is a chance that you know markets are going to turn back um, and resume their upward trend that they had this morning, um, there is nothing here that's confirming your view. So therefore, you're not going to make any trades. You have to have the market really um, align with your whatever your thesis is before you really can make a trade by using this setup. Um, and that's really cool because it just keeps you from doing stupid things like buying bottoms, selling tops. Um, so we're sort of like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a relatively slow mode. So here's what I, you know, here's what I want to show you about FX. Let's just take, I don't know, let's take the pound. And the thing that I like about the pound, um, again, with, with FX, it's absolutely critical that you trade the long against the short, just because uh, on FX side, um, you really need to have the bigger trend in view. So like, I'm going to take the, I'm actually going to take, take the four hour against the five minute. And you see the four hour has a trend buy over here, has, has not changed, you know, has not changed its, um, um, its dominance. Until I get a trend sell, I'm really not, not negative the pound. So if I'm trend buy um, on the longer term charts, and then I go to the five minute charts, and I'm all, all I'm going to do is just, um, either buy turns or trends. And by the way, in the pound, I really, really like buying the turns because the turns is what, uh, this, here's, a, you know, here's a turn in the pound. I mean, you, you're gonna get a few false turns in the pound. So here, this is a false turn, so it's 89. And if you trade that with a, with a 1020, you know, you get blown out. So you, you get stopped out on this one, but here's a second one that definitely works for you on a turn side. 
um, if you trade into the upside. And if you traded this um, from last night, you know, you had one, um, I'm not sure. Oh, again, so the problem is you don't, you don't want to take a turn that's very, very early. So in this case, you would have taken the trend 32s and that went up to another 10 points over here. So, um, and you certainly could have taken the, uh, the, the, I was, oh, this is, this is on Friday. Oh, this is on Friday, right? Uh, it was a Friday. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. It was a very, very quiet day. So it doesn't really count, but you know, you get the idea of how you might be able to trade this, um, uh, you know, one way or the other uh, using the, uh, using the longer term charts. So like if I go to dollar cat on the four hour chart, I believe dollar cat is, is a, in a very, very strong, first of all, you see just how strong a downtrend it is and why, um, trading to the downside is a much higher probability trade, right? Trend sells, trend sells, trend sells. Like in, in certain in certain pairs, it's it's super easy. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything to um, uh, you know to to make it happen. You um, uh, basically just just follow all the trend signals to the side that is the dominant, and uh, and it works really really well. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you on the, on the FX side. Let's go back to see what's going on here on, Jesus, nothing is going on here. Uh, so we got, you know, nothing going on here. It looks like it may be another hour before um, any kind of a turn signal happens. And, it, and it, we're only going to trade it to the upside if it does happen. Uh, otherwise, it's, um, um, it's a straight, straight down signal here. Yeah, better nothing than losses, exactly. And that's the whole point that you know this this keeps you out of stupid trades because you're not um, you know you're not you're not tripping um, tripping bad ideas. Um, so you know, just I wanted to show this to you. Um, I thought I hope you guys do you guys like the the new um, variant that we added here. Um, it's obviously going to be integrated into the EA. And you know, I like to me the the turn the turn and the trend. Um, signals are really like the bread and butter of what we want to do. Um, and the beautiful thing is that, you know, on the FX side of it, when you analyze, when you just sort of trade to, you know, trade to the long-term bias um, by trading the short-term charts, this is where you, our whole job is to trade three out of four on a one to two risk reward, right? That's all we want to do. If we just, if we can just meet that formula across every, every instrument we trade, we we have a positive expectancy in everything we do, right? Because that's a, it's a seventy five percent win rate against the sixty seven percent break even. That's you know that's that's as that's as good as we can get. So by doing this whole you know long term trend against short term trend, you you generally put yourself into that position. I mean, just to sort of show you, um, you know, let's just say we traded from four o'clock onward. And all we traded, all we traded was was just the long, you know, long signals only. We only had long signals, but you know, let's just say we traded long signals only. And let's just say I'm gonna count turn and trend as just like one signal. So it's one winner, two winners, three winners, um, four winners, right? Um, and then you know, even five winners over here, because because you had you, you, all of these are certainly 10, you know, 10, 20 trades. Um, so you had five winners, zero loss losers. Um, by just staying, you know, staying to, to one side of the market, right? Um, and not, you know, not, not taking any unnecessary trades. Um, and actually, I'm actually curious, would this have given me 10 before stopping me out as 56? Yeah, it actually would have given you the full 10. Um, so you could have, you know, you could have traded the short side. But um, all this does is it, you know, all this does is it simply um, offers you just better, better odds. All we're trying to do is trade the best odds possible in every single trade that we have. And you know, like here's a here's a Deutschmark, the the, um, the German. If you look at the German on the one hour, it's also clearly, clearly, although you know, kind of ugly, but not um, not horrendously so. But still, really has not been. It had a one sell sell signal, which quickly turned back to to a buy on the sixth of May. Again, same kind of a thing. You just sort of like teasing. And you see how it quickly turns around within like 24 hours. So you are, you're back to the, you know, back to the long side. So we've been, you know, on the long side since the 20th of May in the German. And if you went, you know, to the one minute charts on the German here um, earlier and you just, you simply ignored all the sell signals. You only had, again, just one out of, um, you know, I don't know, we've got one, two, one, I guess, two, 
three, three, yeah, three out of four today, right? What was it? What was it yesterday? Yesterday just had no. Uh, oh, was this today? No, it was yesterday. Yesterday had no. Uh, so you wouldn't have taken any of the long signals. There was first of all there was no, and you wouldn't have taken any of the you know the, the short signals. Um, here is the twenty eighth of May. Long, long, long. Even this long works. All of these longs work, right? Um, and you just ignore the cells. And you know, sure, some of the cells work. And actually, um, in this case, quite a lot of cells work, but some of them don't. Because if you let's say you're just trading with a 1020 on the on the German, um, I think here you would get just you know, even though this ultimately falls, it's a you know this one is a winner, this one is a loser, this one is a winner. So now you're uh, two to one. Now you're two to two. Now you're two to three, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in the odds. You know, you had some, you know, even though it did fall hard here, the sell signals just didn't have a lot of continuity and had a lot of retracement against them because the, the, the bigger bias is to the upside. And, you know, you got smoked on, um, on a lot of these turns, you know? So, um, so it's just a, just a good example of why you don't want to be doing that. Um, this, on the other hand, you know, it looks like we're in a swan dive today. Uh, it's, you know, and it's going to take a long time for these things to, uh, to stabilize. So we'll just be patient and watch them uh, for the day. But with a, with a turn signal and a trend signal and a filter, I think we have the best of possible worlds. Um, hopefully that makes uh, sense to everybody. You guys like it. Um, I have, as I said, I got I to gotta fix this one, one little bug, which is I need to have a, this has got a, on, in a long only, or long short only. Uh, this is filtering. See, the, the problem is that the indicator is still filtering signals, but it needs to unfilter the signals in these um, um, in this situation. So we'll take care of it. Um, Peter has a question. Let me see if uh, anybody have any questions. Well, you know, we got a little time. You guys can hit me with any questions, any any thoughts you guys have in your mind. Happy to answer anything you like. No, they are. Um, Peter, I, I, I posted them in the, uh, you see, they're right over here. They're, they're upstairs. Just click on it and you have it. I guess you had sound issues so you couldn't hear it. Um, you know, and, and when I fix the bug, you just, um, you just, you know, click it again and uh, re reinstall it. It should, you know, it should work. Um, all right, my friends. Thank you so much. A little bit of a quiet session today. Um, like it feels like all the all the price action happened beforehand, unfortunately. But you know it is what it is. Sometimes um, let's watch the market. Let's you know let's see what goes on. I will um, um, you know I'll keep I'll keep looking for signals and, and I'll keep trading and then I'll review them with you guys um, tomorrow as you know as we start. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a great great morning. I had a good morning too. Um, as long as you're trading to the upside, um, and you know these these little indicators will really help you stay on the right side of the trend. Um, thank you guys. Thank you, Miguel. Anything uh, anything else in your mind, guys? Thank you very much. Um, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. Bye bye.